there are literally thousands of crypto trading guides out there, but all of them are either difficult to understand or way too long or just aren't useful at all. That's exactly why I made this video as a crypto trading 101 guide to show you that trading crypto really isn't that hard. You just have to understand the basics and that starts with some vocab you just have to know. Cryptocurrency or crypto for short is basically digital or virtual currencies that use cryptography for security and operate independently of central banks. You can send crypto from one end of the globe to any other part of the world faster and cheaper than any bank. Blockchain, a decentralized distributed ledger technology that records transactions across multiple computers, providing transparency and security. A blockchain is what keeps crypto transparent and irreversible. Exchange, platforms where cryptocurrencies can be bought, sold, or traded for other digital assets or traditional currencies like fiat. My favorite exchanges are Bybit, KuCoin, Kraken, and Coinbase. Wallet, a digital storage device or application that holds private and public keys, allowing users to store, send, and receive cryptocurrencies. Wallets can be hot, which means they're connected to the internet, or cold, which means they're offline. Market cap, the total value of a cryptocurrency calculated by multiplying the current price by the total number of coins in circulation. Volatility, the degree of variation in a cryptocurrency's price over time. Cryptocurrencies are known for their high volatility compared to traditional assets, which is actually a good thing for traders. Leverage, borrowing funds to increase the potential return on an investment, but also amplifying the risk of loss. With leverage trading on a futures or perpetual market, you don't actually hold the physical coins or tokens, you hold a contract. You can take as little as 2x leverage all the way to 100x leverage or more. Yes, some exchanges allow you to go up to 1000x leverage. While high leverage seems attractive to use and you can get life-changing gains from it, using leverage without care is the quickest way to get wrecked. Getting liquidated. When a leverage position's loss is equal to its margin, the position is closed automatically by the exchange, which liquidates your margin, leaving you wrecked. Now that you know basic crypto lingo, let's go over the types of coins out there. Bitcoin, the first and most widely recognized cryptocurrency known for its decentralized nature and finite supply. Ethereum, a decentralized open source blockchain platform that enables the creation of smart contracts and decentralized applications, or dApps. Altcoins, pretty much everything except for Bitcoin. Coins like Solana, Ethereum, XRP, Cardano, each having unique features and use cases, but not Bitcoin. Stable coins, cryptocurrencies designed to minimize price volatility by being pegged to a stable asset like the US dollar. Some examples include Tether, USD, and USD coin, which is also USDC. Meme coins, crypto coins that were created as jokes from popular internet memes, like Dogecoin from the famous Japanese Shiba dog Doge, or Pepe coin from the 4chan meme Pepe the Frog. Right now, it seems like everything is going up, but it isn't always like this. The crypto market, like every other financial market, goes through different market cycles, like bull markets. When prices are moving higher and higher, often driven by economic news, investor confidence, a hot narrative that everyone's into, or just the emotional nature of crypto markets. Because prices keep making newer highs, bull markets are synonymous with greed and euphoria, which play well into the emotional aspect of crypto markets. Bear markets. This is the opposite of a bull market, which means prices are falling more and more day after day. It's normal to see prices drop anywhere from 10% to 30% in a day in a bear market. Because of continued selling pressure, bear markets are synonymous with pessimism, fear, and a lack of investor confidence. The four-year cycle. Unique to the cryptocurrency market, the four-year cycle is based off the Bitcoin halving event, which happens about every four years. The Bitcoin halving reduces the reward for GPUs that mine Bitcoin, creating scarcity and increasing demand. TradFi, a combination of traditional finance, TradFi is the big boys market typically led by the US stock market and the NYSE or the New York Stock Exchange. TradFi has an impact on the cryptocurrency market, but the two are not always correlated. Black Swan events. These are rare, unpredictable events that are caused by unforeseen events and circumstances leading to market-wide panic selling due to news and world events. The corona crash of March 2020 was a Black Swan event. Bubbles, sometimes referred to as as mania, this is when prices rise significantly and exceed their intrinsic value, often driven by speculative or irrational exuberance. Bubbles are usually followed by a sharp decline in prices when the bubble bursts. Corrections. Short-term declines or pullbacks, typically between 10% and 20%, that see a sharp return to the average price or the mean. Corrections happen in both bull and bear markets and should be interpreted as healthy fluctuations in price. They're a natural
crucial part of the market cycle and can offer re-entry opportunities for investors and traders. Understanding market cycles is important for crypto traders as it helps in making informed investment decisions and strategizing according to the phases of the market. But no matter what market cycle we're in, technical analysis will always be valuable, starting with price action. The movement of a cryptocurrency's price over time, which can be analyzed using charts and technical indicators to make trading decisions. Japanese candlesticks. These are the red and green rectangular shapes with the upper and lower lines on the chart. Japanese candlesticks were developed in Japan hundreds of years ago by rice merchants as a way to track prices and identify trends and patterns for traders. There are loads of candlestick patterns that a guy named Steve Neeson compiled into an excellent book called Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques. But keep in mind that Japanese candlestick patterns don't always work for crypto markets, so take it with a grain of rice. Time frames. While there is no standard time frame, many investors watch the daily time frame to monitor price action, but charting platforms like TradingView allow you to use multiple or custom time frames to monitor price action. The longer the time frame, the stronger the price action and the signals. Support. A price level where a cryptocurrency tends to find buyers, preventing the price from falling further. Resistance. A price where a cryptocurrency tends to encounter selling pressure, preventing the price from rising higher. Trend line. A line connecting a series of price points on a chart showing possible levels of support and resistance for the price, like this. Here's a historical chart for Bitcoin. Back in April 2021, Bitcoin made a high up here at about 65K. We're going to draw a trend line to see when this trend line gets broken to see what happens next. So to do that, we can either click over here, but that's kind of a long way to track our mouse all the way over to a trend line. It's actually a lot easier to press Option T or Alt T, depending if you're using Windows or Mac. Once I have that, I can draw a trend line. Note that just drawing a trend line, it's going to be plotting it wherever. If you want the drawings to be exact, and we do, you're going to hold down the command key on a Mac or you're going to hold down control on Windows. By doing this, it's going to automatically snap to the highest level. And that's key here. We want to focus on the highest levels. The trend will not actually be accurate if we choose a level lower than the high, than the peak right here. We're going to choose this high. We're going to choose this next high right there. Now we have a trend line. We also have a support level right here. And to draw that, we can do the same thing. Alt H or Option H, depending on if you're using a Windows or a Mac computer. This allows us to draw a support line or resistance line. You can change the color, you can change how it looks, but for right now, this is good. And we had support at 29K. Let's see how this plays out. There it is. We saw the price bounce into and break resistance, which is great. And we saw a bounce off of it right there, which means that the price should actually head up higher. Now we have this previous high up here at about 64 or 65K. Let's see how the price plays out. Does it exceed it or does it treat it like it's resistance. There we go, making our way up to 64K, hits it and notice right away, it hits it, it does break higher, but it gets rejected right away. That tells us that it's strong resistance. Note how long it took for the price to actually come up here and test this level of resistance. We can measure it out with TradingView and it tells us that it took 189 days, more than half a year for the price to come back up. That means that this is significant resistance. If we keep playing this out, we're gonna see that the price of Bitcoin does test it again but you can see that it doesn't stay above this level for very long and then finally we start to see the price breaking down and this started the bear market of 2022. Double top. When the price creates a new high after a bullish rally, pulls back, then tries to move up again but can't seem to get past that previous high. If the price is having significant trouble breaking above the previous high, it's likely a double top which is a bearish reversal pattern. The more time between the highs, the more likely the price will make a double top, double bottom. Pretty much the opposite of a double top, a double bottom is when the price creates a new low after bearish drawdown, but can't seem to go any lower. The more time between the price falling again down to that low, the more likely it will be respected as a double bottom, which is a bullish reversal pattern. And to complement technical analysis, it helps to understand some need to know chart patterns like wedges. Think of the shape of a doorstop. Wedges can be bullish or bearish depending on the shape. 
bullish wedges have a line or resistance that the price can't seem to break above with progressively higher lows, which eventually lead to the price breaking above resistance. Bearish wedges do the opposite. Pennant patterns. Think of a college pennant or a triangular flag that's a pennant shape. Pennants are continuation patterns that happen after a rally or a drop, creating a brief pause in the current trend. Continuation patterns mean the trend continues after staying inside the pattern. Flag pattern. A continuation pattern that resembles a rectangular flag that acts in a way similar to the pennants. The price is trapped inside the rectangle until the previous trend resumes. Cup and handle pattern. A bullish continuation pattern that resembles a cup with a handle, indicating a potential breakout to the upside. These patterns typically take weeks or sometimes months to develop and are best used on the daily time frame. Head and shoulders pattern. A reversal pattern that's really similar to a double top. Well, a triple top really, in that the price makes a high, falls back down, moves a little higher than the previous high, then falls back down again to the previous level, establishing support, which is actually called the neckline. After the third try, the price isn't able to surpass the more recent high, so it falls back to support at the neckline, then falls a lot further. Note that there are inverted head and shoulders patterns, which have bullish outcomes too. But you don't just want to look at chart patterns. Indicators can give you additional signs of where the market could be going next. But to be honest, there are way too many indicators to count, and not all of them are useful or good for crypto charts. I'm going to focus on the ones that have been battle tested by me over the last seven years. Volume. Way more important than most people think, volume shows the buying and selling that happens per period, dependent on the time frame. The regular volume indicator on TradingView reflects buying and selling the base currency, which, to be honest, isn't that helpful for crypto trading, since low cap coins have hundreds of millions of coins traded in a day, but it's really only just a few thousand dollars. This is exactly why we created an automatic volume converter for crypto. The TBT base to quote currency converter is a free automatic volume converter for TradingView that shows how much USDT was traded on the BTC USDT chart, or insert any other crypto pair you want here. Check out the difference between volume and our TBT base to quote currency converter here on TradingView. Up here, we have the regular volume. This is the standard one that you would add. We have green and red bars that correlate to the candles. If it closes bearish or down, it's going to be a red candle. If it closes bullish, it's green. This actually isn't that helpful in my opinion, which is why for our indicator, we make everything gray because we really just care about the buying and selling that's happening, the amount of volume that's generated. So this indicator does the same thing that this one does, except it demystifies how much is traded. If you see up here, this number keeps changing. This is the actual amount of volume of Ethereum traded. In yesterday's candle, 28,000 Ethereum roughly were traded. But how much is that in USDT? Well, we would have to take the closing price of the daily candle times 28,000 or 29,000 to do the math. Or we can just use this indicator and it tells us that $106 million worth of USD was traded. The reason why this is actually better than the normal volume is because this is telling us how much volume is traded. Therefore, we know how much volume we can use on this chart so that we don't become a wall in the order book. The beauty of this is that we have this yellow moving average line that tells us that on average, we're looking at about $76 million of USDT traded for this specific exchanges trading pair. In this case, I'm not going to exceed more than 761 of Ethereum per trade on this specific trading pair. RSI or the Relative Strength Index, a momentum indicator that measures the speed and change of price movements, helping to identify overbought or oversold conditions. This is crazy useful to tell traders when a chart could be fizzing out or just getting started. But note that the time frame matters a lot. And just because RSI is overbought or oversold does not guarantee an instant reversal. Moving averages or MAs, an average of historical price action over the last several periods, customizable by setting the length. There are many different calculations for moving averages that change or adjust the weight or reaction of the moving average line. A simple moving average looks a bit different than an exponential moving average. The most important moving averages to look at are the 9 and 21 period moving averages. The TBO indicator, a combination of multiple moving averages complete with long and short signals, early reversal alerts, breakout alerts, and it automatically draws support and resistance right on the chart. I've been using the TBO since 2019, and it is my most profitable indicator. Fibonacci retracements. This indicator is actually more of a drawing tool, and you'd be surprised at how well it plots future support and resistance levels based on this ancient mathematical sequence. The key levels I pay attention to are the 0.618 level, also known as the golden supporter resistance level, and the Fibonacci extensions that plot future resistance levels of 1.272 and 1.618 after the price breaks out higher. 
order book, a public display of all buy and sell orders for a trading pair visible on exchanges or third party trading platforms that import that data. The buying side is called the bid and the selling side is called the ask. Some traders live and breathe off the order books, but keep in mind that these can be spoofed with big buy or sell orders that can suddenly disappear, fooling traders into thinking that there will be a sudden influx of volume. Liquidity, the amount of volume and orders queued in an order book generated from buying and selling cryptocurrencies. Higher liquidity means a more active market with a larger trading volume and thinner spread between the buy and sell orders and the order book. Lower liquidity means less volume and a larger gap in the order book, which can cause slippage. Limit orders versus market orders. Limit orders are buy or sell orders placed at fixed prices with fixed amounts. If I want to sell one Bitcoin at $93,264, I'm going to use a limit order. By using limit orders, I'll get a cheaper trading fee as a market maker, and the amount depends on the exchange. But if you're in a rush, market orders push your order to the front of the order book to satisfy the volume of your order, often resulting in slippage and higher taker fees. Slippage, the difference between the expected price of a trade and the actual price at which the trade is executed. It mostly happens when a market order is too large for the order book, causing the price to pump or dump significantly to close the buy or sell order. The spot market. This is what most people think of when they think of crypto trading. The spot market is the instrument for buying and or selling crypto on an exchange in hopes to make a profit. Buying coins on the spot market means that you now own those coins and can withdraw them for long-term holding in a crypto wallet. The futures market. The futures market is another instrument for making money trading crypto by using leverage. With leverage, you can multiply your margin in hopes of multiplying your profits. Futures markets are sometimes called perpetual markets or perps because traditionally these contracts expired at some point in the future. But perpetual futures markets continually renew in perpetuity. Keep in mind though that buying coins on the futures market does not mean you can withdraw those coins. You're purchasing contracts that perpetually renew, not the coins themselves. Mooning and pumping. When the price of a coin pushes rapidly higher thanks to a large amount of market buy orders and not enough sellers to keep the price low. As the price continues to rage higher, the chart looks like the price will continue until it hits the moon. Pumps are often momentary, resulting in a long upper wick that shoots the price up anywhere between 10 to 1000%. Dumping. When the price of a coin or token is falling severely and quickly due to large sell orders, which outweigh the buy orders. Dumps are usually sudden and severe, sometimes dropping 10% or way more. Risk to reward ratio. This is a ratio to help traders figure out how much they're willing to risk in order to receive a reward. A common risk to reward ratio is three to one, meaning I'm willing to risk one lot in hopes to earn three, or to put it in terms of percentages, I'll risk 10% to earn 30%. But your risk to reward ratio is only relevant based on your win rate. Some ratios are just plain unprofitable as you can see on this graphic, but with the right ratio and win rate, you can move the odds in your favor. Taking profit or selling. Taking profit is your job as a trader. This is how you grow your portfolio. And the best way to approach taking profit is not getting fixated on fixed percentages or dollar amounts per trade, but consistently closing in the green. During bull runs and euphoric markets, you're gonna see people posting diamond hands or gifts from Wolf of Wall Street. But here's the truth. Prices don't go up into the right forever. If you're a trader, get used to selling a percentage of your holdings as the price moves higher. That's what I do to secure profits and to let the rest ride. Stop loss. Stop losses have a bad rap. The whole idea of using a stop loss is to protect your portfolio or a position that's already in profit. If I have a trade that's already in profit, I've sold into a bull rally and I want to make sure to sell the rest in case the price goes against me, I'm going to use a stop loss. And that is Crypto Trading 101. Now that you know all this knowledge, you still need to dig even deeper by doing some research on what trading strategy you want to adopt before you actually start trading. But this is the truth. Only 10% of traders are ever profitable. And the other 90% either don't have the knowledge or they don't have the willpower to work through and learn the skills necessary to become profitable. I know this myself. When I first started trading, I made every mistake imaginable. Buying the top, selling the bottom, missing out on rallies, 
Valley is getting liquidated with leverage, all because I wouldn't stick to just one trading strategy until I learned it well enough to earn consistent profits. And I know that if I spent the time learning an exact working strategy and learn from the mistakes of others, I would have become profitable way earlier trading crypto. If you want to learn how to trade crypto profitably, click the link in the description. I think you're going to like what I have there. Also, you've probably heard whisperings about the bull market coming around. Click on this video right up here to learn how to get rich in the 2024 bull run. Stay awesome and stay in the green.